Right guys, so people talk about um, drugs in sport. People seem to think that cycling and running are the only uh, sports with drugs <laughs> where people are getting caught for doping. They think, like, oh, in soccer, like nobody takes it because nobody ever gets caught. Well, you know, that's not hard, to be honest. Um, like I was reading up an article and I found that there was guys playing for uh, a ger in the German league in the second division who still have very high standards. It's not the highest, but it's high, you know. Um, uh, this guy said that you know he was he played for prof as a professional for years, and he only ever been drug tested once in his entire career. And there's other people who were never tested. All right, and people say, oh, cycling isn't doing enough. Like Paul Kimmage was saying, oh, cycling isn't doing enough. You know, these 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 problems should be addressed. Uh, they should cut doping out of the sport altogether. They should make it possible to compete without drugs. And I'm like, that's a bit unrealistic. I mean, like you know, how are you gonna do that? Like how are you gonna do that? You know, like yeah, if you make the if you make it a less grueling event, like if you make it, let's say if, if you're doing shorter races or you're doing, um, you're getting more days off, uh, maybe if there's less stages, yeah, you know, people who are clean would be able to do better. They would be able to finish further up, but they're not going to be able to compete with the best guys. That's just not going to happen. How on earth could you beat the best guys when they're on drugs and you're not? All right, now let's say for a marathon, um, the drug, all those drugs give you a five minute advantage. So... You know, let's say if Kipchoge clean is running two, can run say two hundred six for a marathon, you'd have to be able to run two hundred one clean to be able to compete with him because he's running two hundred one with drugs. So it's just like it's very very difficult when they get that big a head start. It's like if you think about it, it's like um uh let me think. It would be like racing a marathon. Uh, you know the the best guys in the world get get a one mile head start on you. You're only allowed to start the marathon after after they've run one mile. So they have to run. So um, you're giving them a head start. That's what it's like. So do you see how difficult it is to keep compete, to compete with the very best when when you're at that kind of disadvantage? So yeah, it's every sport. It's not just cycling and and running. Um, cycling is making more of an effort than most other sports. They're getting drug tested regularly, and yeah, they could do more. But um, compare that to soccer and rugby. There's like hardly any. They're hardly making any effort to stop these these drugs. So yeah, it's it's every sport when there's money. <laughs> you know, the people are going to be doping. You know, people want that lifestyle. People want to be able to, if they want to be a professional footballer, people want to be able to make a living out of the sport. They want to be able to play in front of big crowds of, I don't know, maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people a week. They want to be, they want to have nice, a lot of money. They don't, they want to be able to just play football for a few hours in the morning, then come home and just chillax and do nothing else rather than having to work a job for, you know, 40 hours a week, come home and train in the evening or something. You know, it's it's the glamour lifestyle. People are willing to risk their health taking drugs to, to get that, you know, especially when there's so much money involved.